Let's take a look at a function. Remember a while back we introduced the concept of what a function is. f of x, let's call it and say it's equal to x squared plus 4x plus 1. Now by now you should understand that this is a function of x, means we plug in the value of x and we calculate the answer and we can graph it. And you also know that it's quadratic because it has an x squared term in it. And by now you, we've been introducing this enough that you should know that pretty much every quadratic is going to look like a parabola of some kind. It's going to either be like this or it could be upside down, but it's going to look like a parabola. It's not going to look like a line because lines do not ever, ever have square terms in them. All right. So let's take a look and let's sketch the graph of it and then I want to show you a few things. And I'm just going to do a, a, a general sketch. I'm not looking for accuracy here. I'm just looking to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like. So this is x and this is f of x. Uh, usually, you know, in the past you call it the y-axis, but since we're talking more about function notation, then this will be, instead of calling it y, we'll call it f of x, the function of x, which is basically the same thing. Now, if you were to actually take and stick in values of x, you know, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and then plot those points, you would get a parabola that would look more or less like this. Now, this is just a sketch, so don't, you know, don't, don't take me to the cleaners if this isn't right exactly, but basically it's going to look like this. And that's kind of a weak, a weak parabola anyway, because it, it should kind of go up and curve up like a smiley face. But that's the general idea. You get the general idea of the shape of this thing, okay? Now, we have a couple of terms that we need to introduce. The first one is this concept of a root of a quadratic. So what I need to do is write that down for you. The root uh, is where the function f of x, that's the function that we're talking about, crosses uh, the x-axis. All right, so it's where it crosses the x-axis. So you can see right here that this function comes down. It crosses the x-axis here, and then it goes below, and then it crosses the x-axis over here. So this function has two uh, crossings of the x-axis, which we're now renaming, and we're calling them roots. If you want to think about this as being the ground, you know, like the soil or something, and then this is like a plant growing out of it or something, this would be where the roots are, right? Right here where it crosses and goes into the ground. If that helps you remember it, great. If, if you don't like that, don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's just an idea, just something to help you. So this is called a root, uh, and where it crosses right here, the x-axis, that's also called a root. All right. So how would you calculate the roots, the crossing points? All right. You need to kind of reprogram yourself. Anytime you hear the word root, you're looking for these crossing points. How would you find them? Well, to find these crossing points, you're looking for all of the points where the function f of x, the thing you're graphing, is equal to zero. In other words, the y values is what we used to call them. Now we call them the f of x values. We want to know where they're zero because here the f of x value is zero because there's no vertical extent. It's right on the axis. And here the f of x is also zero because it's sitting, it's not up or down above the x-axis either. So here is where f of x is zero and here f of x is also equal to zero. So if this is the function in question, to figure out and find out what the roots are, so we'll say to find these roots, which are just the crossing points uh, of the function f of x on the x-axis, all you do is you set this function x squared plus 4x plus 1. You just set it equal to 0 because, remember, this function, this is f of x, right? This is the, the basically the mathematical definition of that shape that we have there. So we set it equal to 0. We're trying to figure out where it crosses, so we set the f of x equal to 0, and then we use what we have learned to calculate the x values, right, where it drives the function to 0. Now, there are lots of ways to solve this, right? Uh, we could move this 1 over here, and we could do completing the square. You could graph it really precisely and try to figure out what the roots are. But we've also just recently learned the quadratic formula. And remember, every single one of those quadratic formulas was useful when you had some kind of quadratic equation equal to 0. And that's why the quadratic formula is so useful. So in this case, a is equal to 1, because that's what's in front of the x squared b is equal to 4, that's what's in front of the x, and c is equal to 1. So you see, we'll crank through the quadratic formula, but don't forget the big picture here. We're going to end up with two values of x when we calculate using that quadratic formula. And those two values of x are going to be the value of x here and the value of x here that are the points where this uh, function crosses the x-axis because those are the points where the function is equal to 0. So we're using the quadratic formula as a tool to find those points. 
So let's go ahead and crank through that. The x values is going to be negative b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. So x is going to be equal to negative b. b is 4 plus or minus the square root b squared is 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1. All of this stuff is divided by 2 times a. So we will continue this work right over here. x would then be equal to, uh, and notice I forgot to put the negative b here. b was equal to 4. That should go right there, so we'll write it in here. Negative 4 plus or minus. On the inside here, we're going to have 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 1 times 1 is easy. It's just 4. And then on the bottom, you'll have 2 times a, where a, a is equal to 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. So now we have put all the numbers in the appropriate places. As in my haste to get this done, I, I didn't put the numbers here or the a here. But you get the point. We've, we put them in. We did the multiplication times 1. It's very simple. And we stick it in there. So now what do we have? We'll continue simplifying. Negative 4 plus or minus the square root. What is 16 minus 4? That's just 12 and then we'll have a2 on the bottom. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what the square root of 12 is. So in order to not clutter up our solution, I'm gonna go up here, so we have a little blank space, and say square root of 12, we have three times four, and four is two times two. So now that we've done that, we look for pairs. A single two can come out, and a square root of three is left behind. That is what the square root of 12 is equal to. So We'll go back over here and say negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 12. Now we know is 2 times the square root of 3 over 2. So that's the answer, essentially. But you then look a little carefully. You're dividing this entire thing by 2. And you notice that this is divisible by 2 and this is divisible by 2 because there's a 2 out front. So you divide each of these terms by 2. So what you end up with is uh, negative, what is 4 divided by 2? You get a 2. And then here, 2 divided by 2 gives you 1, so it kind of disappears. So plus or minus square root of 3, and that's it. So you get negative 2 plus or minus square root of 3 because you just divide each term by 2. So that's what you have. But notice there are two solutions here because you have a plus and you have a minus. So if you're going to write it all down, you would say that x is equal to two numbers. The first one is negative 2 plus the square root of 3. And the second one is negative 2 minus the square root of 3. So I'm going to kind of circle both of those. These are the two solutions for the roots of this polynomial. So when you hear the word roots, you need to be thinking of, it means the solutions. It means that when you set it equal to 0, those are the solutions. That, that's what we call the root. Now, I know it looks a little weird because you have negative 2 plus a radical, negative 2 minus a radical. But don't forget that this radical, square root of 3, it's just a number. Now, this is the exact value. Square root of 3 is exact. If you punch it in your calculator, you're going to get a decimal approximation for it. So you have negative 2 plus this radical, negative 2 minus this radical. So this one is more negative. Negative 2 minus a number is more negative. That would be this root over here. x is equal to that negative value. Negative 2 plus this radical, that one is a little bit more shifted this direction. Uh, and so that's this root here. So this one corresponds to this root, and this one corresponds to this root. But the point is that I really want to drive home to you is that in most cases, in a lot of the cases, when you try to find the roots, you set the function equal to zero, and at the end of the day, you get two of them. Because in most cases, these polynomials, they touch or they cross the x-axis in two places. So you get two roots. One of them's here, one of them's here. So keep that in your mind because I'm going to shift this up and I'm going to give you a new polynomial that's going to look a little bit different. So this one crossed in two places. We got two roots and they were real roots. This is a real number. It's negative and that other number is also negative, but they're both real. So let's go and take a look at the next one. All right, the next one that we're going to take a look at is going to be a function that would be f of x uh, is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right, and again, I'm going to sketch this one before we really get started with anything else. It's not going to be a perfect sketch. It's not going to be like super mathematically accurate, but if you were to graph some graph paper and, and take a look at it, it would basically look something like this. You know it's going to look like a parabola because of this, because of the fact that it has a square term, um, but this one's a little different. This one comes down but touches the axis. It just touches right there, and then it goes back up the other way. Now you see the difference. 
Here, this one doesn't cross down below the axis and come back up. It barely kisses that axis. It touches in exactly one point. The very bottom of this graph, if you could zoom in, would just barely touch that x-axis before going up. So if we're looking for the roots, which is where this thing crosses, we really expect to only find one solution or one place where it crosses in comparison with this one where clearly there were two crossings. So you see physically this one's a little bit different just because this quadratic is shifted up a little bit. It doesn't actually cross in two places. It only touches in one place. So let's find the roots. And the way we do that uh, is, I'll write down here, we'll find the roots uh, by saying that x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Essentially, we're setting this function equal to 0, which means we're going to be finding the point or points which is where the function, which I'm, I labeled y here, f of x, is equal to 0. Now to solve it, again, you can use completing the square, but we're going to use the quadratic formula. And in this case, we're going to write it down, uh, down below. So x is equal to negative b, plus or minus the square root, b squared, minus 4 times a times c, over 2 times a, and here we'll plug in the points. What is b? b in this case is 2, positive 2, so here we'll have negative, because of the, the quadratic formula has a negative, 2 plus or minus square root of b squared. b is 2, so it's 2 squared minus 4 times a. a is now 1, because that's what's in front of this, times c. c is also 1, like this, all over 2 times a. Uh, let me take that a away. 2 times a, where a is equal to 1, because that's what's in front of the x squared. Now let's crank through these numbers x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus on the inside here 2 squared is 4 minus this is 4 4 times 1 obviously is 4 and then on the bottom I have 2 times 1 is 2 so down below I have negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 is 0 and then I have 2 so this is different than before it looks a little bit strange but let's just continue through it and take a look x is equal to negative two plus or minus let me ask you what is the square root of zero have you ever thought of that before the square root of zero we're just looking for a number times itself that gives a zero and the only one that works is zero the square root of zero is zero uh, over two so you see now here it is we usually have two answers because we have plus or minus but in this case no matter if i add plus zero or minus 0, I'm going to get the same thing. I'm just, just going to have negative 2 over 2, so x is going to be equal to negative 1. So you see, I only got one answer as a result of this quadratic equation, and that corresponds physically with what I see because this graph just touches the x-axis in exactly one spot. It does not go down and up, so it doesn't cross in two spots like before. So here's the part where it confuses a lot of students, but I'm hoping to not confuse you. Basically, the theory of math says that when you have an x squared term, you always expect two solutions. All right? But clearly here we only got one. But really, when you think about it, we have two solutions here. It just so happens that both of them are negative 1. Because look back up at this step. What we really had was negative 2 plus 0 over 2. And then separately, we had negative 2 minus 0 over 2. Now, in both cases, it still gave us negative 1 as an answer, but there were two answers. One of them had a plus 0, and one of them had a minus 0. If this number were anything other than 0, it would have given us two solutions, like always. But here, it gave us plus 0 and minus 0, which ended up giving us only one unique answer, but it stemmed from two conditions that just happened to give us the same thing. So because of that, the math predicts that we should have two solutions. We did have two solutions, but it only corresponded to one actual number. So what we could do is we call this a double root. A double root. Whereas in the previous problem, we had two individual roots. This one we call a double root to remind ourselves that yes, it's only x is equal to negative 1, but it kind of counts twice because really it came from two separate kind of a plus and a minus. It's kind of like it happened two times. It's just that these points are right on top of each other. So it's really only one physical point. We call it a double root. So we still have two answers here. Uh, and so we should have, a, the, we have should we expect to have two answers, two roots, um, and so we call it a double root to remind ourselves of that. Okay? Um, one thing I want to say before I move on to the next section is the following, all right? And that is going to dovetail and, 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 and go very smoothly into what we're going to talk about in the next section. 
Sometimes you graph these quadratics and they cross in two places and you get two unique answers, right? Every single time you get two unique answers like this, if you look through the quadratic formula and follow me through the math, the reason you get two answers is because of the square root here. Because the quadratic formula always has plus or minus in it. That's where your two answers comes from. In this case, it was square root of 12, which became a number here. So it was plus the square root of 3 minus the square root of 3. Uh, and so because the, what was under this radical was a positive number, in this case it was positive 12, any positive number is going to give you plus this number minus this number after you take the square root. So you're always going to get two answers if what is under here is positive. However, if you get to a point where what's under this radical is zero, then you're only going to have one real root, which we are calling a double root. Okay, so I want you to kind of remember that in the back of your mind because in the next lesson I'm going to kind of write it all down and generalize it for you. Basically what's under this radical is an important number. If it's a positive number then it always means you have two roots and if it's zero it means you're only going to have one root which we call a double root for all the reasons I told you about just a minute ago. So for now just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, make sure you understand this, graph them, solve them if you like, and then follow me on to the next lesson where we're going to continue talking about roots of quadratics and then I will introduce the concept of what we call a discriminant, uh, which is very simple. When you follow me on to the next lesson, we'll conquer that right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.